This is the Helpful Art Teacher here to teach you how to use the app on the iPad Sketchbook Pro. Press on the app to open it. Once you've opened the app, press on the plus sign in the bottom left hand corner to open up a new document. Once you've opened up the new document, you're going to see an array of tools across the top of that document. I'm now going to explain what each of those tools are. The four boxes on the left um, are your library. If you press on that, you'll get a library of all the other pictures that other people have made on this particular iPad. Um, if you open the plus sign, that opens a new document like you just did. The italicized I is um, for your help button. The little arrow that that um, points backwards will undo your last step. In fact, if you press on it several times, you can undo your last several steps. That's great if you make a mistake. The next tool is very important. That's the tool menu. It looks like a little paintbrush. Press on that. You're going to get a drop-down menu, which will give you your choice of tools. And it'll also allow you to control the radius of the tools by sliding back and forth, the opacity, um, how dark or light the tool is, how opaque or transparent. It also allows you to control your colors, um, how light or dark they are, and how opaque or transparent they are. That's a very important tool, that paintbrush, that tool menu. Um, the next one, that little squiggly line, um, if you press on that, you'll get um, a choice of shapes. Um, you'll get squares, circles, or just the squiggly line, which is free drawing. The next one is the symmetry or mirror image tool. If you press on that, it's a squiggly line with a dashed line next to it, vertical. Press on that, everything you draw will automatically, simultaneously, give you a mirror image of that same drawing. Kind of like folding a paper in half and cutting it, and you get a mirror image of the same drawing. Um, the next one is to add text or transform your layers. Um, you press in that ellipse, those three periods right in a row, um, and you click on transform. It allows you to take the layer that you're working on and change the size of it just by using two fingers, uh, move it around, uh, rotate it, flip it. So the transform layer is extremely useful. Next to that, um, is the is the layer button. Um, it looks like two pieces of paper on top of each other. Um, that allows you to add, delete, and control the opacity of or transparency of all the different layers in your artwork. So if you press on that, you're going to get a drop-down menu um, that allows you to add layers, um, change the order of the layers, etc. So what you can do is you can have one layer for your drawing, another layer uh, for coloring and shading your drawing, a third layer for your background. So I'm going to press on that right now, and you're going to see the drop-down menu. Um, you can see I have one layer for uh, each girl. I have another layer for when I colored the girls. And I have another last final layer um, for my blue background. And as you can see... Um, Below that are a bunch of tools within that layer menu. So I'm going to go over what those tools are in a moment as soon as they appear. Let's see. We have um, the opacity you can control, the, the little slider. Um, so if you put it all the way to one side, it'll be... Uh, darker. If you push it to the left, you'll get it more transparent. And on the left, we have a plus sign. That allows you to add a new layer. The double plus sign as you, allows you to duplicate the layer that you're working on. The plus sign with the flower allows you to open up your photo library and import any picture from your photo library or camera roll into your artwork. Um, and that's going to become very valuable later. Uh, the next one, that little arrow going down, allows you to merge any layer with the layer in back of it. Um, and that's that's very nice if you um, 
if you're done coloring or something and you want to merge the color with the lines and then use the transform button to change the size, you can make sure the color transforms with that. Um, again, the opacity, um, I use that on the background to make the background lighter in this instance. If you look at the very bottom of your, your screen, in the middle you're going to see a little disc. Very small disc right in the middle of your picture. That disc is your favorite. Pressing on that disc, you'll see um, all the colors, the paint brushes, uh, with the opacity and the color already set that you use the most often as you're drawing. That's very useful. If you want to zoom in and create more detail, you just use two fingers and push them away from each other and you'll be able to zoom in on the drawing uh, to work on the most minute details. As you watch the drawing unfold, try and think about the fact that I added the colors on one layer, the lines on another, and the background on another. So here's the layer for the drawing, add another layer for the color, uh, change the opacity and the color, color it in, put the layer for the drawing in front of the layer for the skin tone. When you add the shadow and then you smear it, um, you'll end up doing that without smearing the original drawing. Use a different color for the highlights and a different texture and brush for the shirt. Uh, add another layer for the background. Use the paint bucket to flood fill the background. As you can see, the background's a little too dark, so you can go to your layers and change the opacity, make it lighter. And you can duplicate one girl and another girl before you draw the faces so you can draw different colors and faces on each of them. And here is the finished picture.